Hello, I'm Morton Jensen, an architect and founder of JRDV Urban International. Over many years and in different capacities, I've been involved in ideas for transportation improvements and urban development in downtown Oakland. The following is a visualization showing how new rail improvements at Oakland's waterfront can be designed to resolve conflicts between one, improved access to the Port of Oakland, two, Link 21's second Transbay 2, and finally, three new waterfront developments, such as is currently proposed at Howard Terminal. These improvements are intended to strengthen downtown Oakland's position as one of the Bay Area's three principal transportation hubs, including Market Street and Salesforce in San Francisco and Diradon Station in San Jose. Finally, these proposed infrastructure improvements are geared to enhancing the pedestrian experience throughout downtown and the waterfront, including the pedestrian and bike bridge to Alameda as proposed by Bike East Bay. Historically, San Francisco and New York were the two largest ports on their respective coasts. Ironically, both ports were separated from their intended destinations by large bodies of water, thus stranding much of their rail infrastructure on the mainland in Oakland and in New Jersey. In the New York Metro, conflicts between passenger and freight rail hubs were resolved long ago when the port operations were consolidated on the mainland in New Jersey. Not so at our own nexus of the Bay Area. Here, conflicts between both our passenger and freight rail hubs have only become more acute to the point where they now threaten each other's future viability. This visualization shows one solution for resolving this conflict. Let's start with the goal of providing dedicated rail going both north and south to the Port of Oakland so it can meet its long-term growth projections while decarbonizing. For freight rail to the Port of Oakland to be truly unencumbered, the existing tracks through what is now Jack London Square and the area of the proposed Howard Terminal development needs to be undergrounded. Next, we have, of course, our existing BART, here shown in blue, which today serves as the backbone for passenger rail throughout the Central Bay Area. This shows that the heart of the entire regional BART system are its subways in downtown Oakland, including three existing underground stations. It is proposed that the new Link 21 Transbay 2 employ standard gauge rail, here shown in yellow, to San Francisco to be located above grade through the Port of Oakland until approximately Market Street, where it would go below grade and enter a proposed new waterfront subway station located along 2nd Street. The standard gauge rail, again shown in yellow, would then continue underground to connect to an expanded lower level of the existing 12th and 19th Street BART stations. Potentially, additional stations could be added as part of the large development sites at Telegraph and Grand, as well as in the San Antonio neighborhoods with an overpass to Brooklyn Basin. Now let's take a look in 3D, starting by looking in the area of the currently proposed Howard Terminal development. Here, dedicated freight rail and standard gauge passenger rail both descend underground at around Market Street. The standard gauge rail continues to an underground station on 2nd Street in the same location where the Howard Terminal EIR proposes a transportation hub. This undergrounding allows the Howard Terminal development to connect directly with the city fabric without looming vehicular viaducts nor looping pedestrian overpasses. It also forever resolves safety issues when long trains block not only Howard Terminal, but the rest of the urbanized waterfront. As mentioned, the new standard gauge rail continues north where it connects to an expanded lower level of the existing 12th and 19th Street BART stations. These are shown in both yellow and blue as they are interchanges between two rail systems, much like Muni Metro and BART under Market Street in San Francisco. Overall, two relatively short tunnels are needed to untangle the Bay Area's transportation nexus, one for dedicated freight rail and one for standard gauge passenger rail. Meanwhile, this view shows how the new below grade standard gauge rail here shown in yellow, connects to the existing 12th Street station, engineered very delicately so as to not disrupt BART's existing line, here shown in blue. A challenge for undergrounding the existing freight rail along Embarcadero could be the Posey and Webster tubes, which may not be deep enough to allow for a full undergrounding of freight rail east of Broadway. Here it is proposed that the freight line be only partially depressed. 
with the remaining above grade portion fully encased as part of a landscaped high line. This shows how the existing 12th and 19th Street stations are expanding to create a downtown Oakland interchange for all passenger rail through the East Bay. While this expansion will certainly be an engineering challenge, it brings the enormous economic and functional benefits of not having to add completely new stations that would be far less effective as an interchange and not support the needed pedestrian activation of downtown Oakland along Broadway at its core. Going back above grade, you can see where BART gauge and standard gauge rail continues from 19th Street Station through an optional telegraph and grand station that could be incorporated into the proposed Lane Jones TMG developments, perhaps after being used as a construction staging site for Link 21. Continuing on to MacArthur Station, you can see where the existing BART Richmond line is converted to standard gauge rail, now shown in yellow, before it splits off towards Richmond and then continues to Sacramento using some variant of the current Capital Corridor alignment. Very likely, BART's current Richmond rail yard can be used as a maintenance facility for the standard gauge rail that is also a continuation of the current Caltrain alignment all the way to San Jose after it passes through San Francisco, the new Transbay Tube, and downtown Oakland. Further engineering studies will be needed to determine the actual distances to clear these existing tubes. Here the High Line slowly emerges above grade southeast of Broadway and on the back side of the plank. The emerging High Line continues to Franklin where vehicular access is probably not absolutely needed between the plank and the old port or Haslett warehouse building. Here freight rail must then clear the Webster tube where the unbuildable area above the tube becomes a gently sloping linear park. Webster Street continues much as it currently does, except it is elevated as it turns to connect to the existing at-grade lanes of Embarcadero. The High Line continues on the north side of Embarcadero in place of the current tracks that are instead fully encased with a beautifully landscaped High Line that will be both quieter and more pleasant to look down upon. As the Capital Corridor passengers riding between Oakland and San Jose now take higher frequency trains along the present day Fremont BART alignment, the old Amtrak station can now be repurposed or redeveloped. Again, there is no change to the vehicular access along Embarcadero south of the High Line. Fallon Street will slope up vertically to meet and cross the High Line and intersect with the Embarcadero more or less as it does today, except somewhat elevated. Finally, the High Line terminates in a beautiful park overlooking where the channel meets the estuary. South of the channel, freight rail daylights and continues down the current alignment. This makes it possible to walk nearly completely independent car traffic all the way from Lake Merritt along the High Line and even onto the elevated park encircling the A's ballpark before continuing to Alameda. It should be pointed out that the bridge across Oakland Harbor effectively gives Alameda a high frequency metro station reachable by bike and walking. The result is a world-class pedestrian-focused waterfront thoroughly integrated with downtown and regional transportation. Besides providing enormous environmental benefits, the resolution of the nexus of the Bay Area, freight and passenger rail through Oakland's waterfront and downtown is intended to ensure economic growth while creating far more equitable access to housing and jobs for all. Thank you.